Right, how's it going? Uh, back at the old fridge again, but unfortunately tonight I'm not going to be doing any fab work, which I think is probably more interesting. Uh, we're, we're down on some repair work here. Weekend just gone, I've uh, been away with my mate down South Wales, having a party with some of the boys. And uh, Saturday we had a nice little run through the Welsh hills, you know. Uh, I was on the old... 750 bus here, the mighty little Honda, and he was on this 2 litre SNS Harley. Fortunately, the uh, the little Honda wasn't quite the race bike that she thought she was. Now, uh, she done all right, she behaved very well, and you know, we overtook a load of cars, and you know, we generally made a nuisance of ourselves. It was a good laugh when we got there, you know, 150 mile into the trip. Slowing down, I knew she wasn't quite right, but we pulled in, we seen the fellas and, you know, we, we just set our tents up and, you know, there, there, was, there was some Guinness around, you know, we, uh, we, we, had, a, we had a few beers. Uh, being sensible, like, you know, uh, I slept in, you know, got up at the, uh, the crack of noon, uh, packed up my gear and had a little bin below on, on, on my own. Uh, didn't make it too far now she uh she was she wasn't happy with me you know she she she'd had a bit of a tantrum and uh and she she shut us down so we figured out what was wrong quite quick um the uh inland manifold rubbers three of them out the four had split and um, and the fourth one now he, he he wasn't he wasn't too happy either you know so we uh done the old Take them up, you know, with the uh, with the gaffer tape, the electrical tape, and cable ties, you know, whatever. Whenever we got time, you know, and tried to do a bit of bodgeering. Now, griller build, we griller built it roadside. Uh, got on the way, made it another thirty mile, and then she she just said, "Now nah, I'm shutting down. I've had enough." Um, stop just. At this comfy little bit at the side of the road, it was the only 100 yards of pavement for like 10 miles in any direction on these country roads. And there's tractors and combine harvesters and artics and all sorts of shit coming through. You know, so she done us a favour by stopping where she did because there's this little churchyard there. Uh, I quickly determined that you know we weren't making any roadside repairs, and we was we was ringing the big yellow taxi to uh, to to come and get us. Uh, big yellow taxi couldn't make it out till six in the morning the following day so we set up camp in this little graveyard you know it's quite nice you know lovely view of the welsh hills you know had a couple of beers in the bag you know we we, we waited it that way uh, i got it home so i'm just doing the autopsy now um it's it's it is what it is it the manifold rubbers are split because we were riding quickly uh, it didn't really show itself until we slowed down at the end of the trip and she's been she's been leaning off she's been leaning off good style so we've got to figure out how bad the engine damage is um and what we got to, what we got to replace are we into another rebore how many valves are burnt out is the head burnt out don't know yet but before we bust a single gasket just so we've got an idea of what we're walking into i've got a few things here laid out in the fridge that will give me a clue and if any of you are in this position where you don't quite know what's wrong um or you're unsure of whether to do some exploratory you know taking an engine apart this will this might save you from taking the engine apart where you might not have actually had to take an engine apart you know, uh, I'm pretty sure about my situation before before I do this because I've played this game before and I know this I know this play quite well. Uh, so I'll I'll just bring it in and I'll show you these tools and then I'll reposition you so I can try and show you from my point of view what we're doing, what's going on, what we're seeing and why that's happening. Here's a second. Okay, I'll try and be as steady as I can here. Uh, we've got two two lots of uh, gauges here. First one on the right, the blue one. Uh, that is a compression tester. 
So we'd like to see our Sunder pressure to be I, I like 100 psi and above. Uh, uh, these adapters here, they're for the different size spark plugs. They screw on the end of this hose here, and that hose there has the QD fitting on the gauge, so so that you can quickly you know, do it up once you've screwed that in. Also, if you haven't, if any of these adapters don't fit the job you're working on. You've got these rubber bungs that you can jam in the spark plug hole and just use brute force niggerings to try and hold it down while you spin the motor over and let the gauge build up. The gauge will hold its reading until you release that 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 one way valve there. The next one is the leak down tester. If you get to the point with the compression tester where you say below like 80, 80 200 plus is, is a good working motor um, if you're below that which I suspect we are on this then you want to do a leak down test on it that, that will determine whether your leak is coming from the inlet valve the exhaust valve or the piston rings Slightly more complicated, but you know, you and, and you need an air compressor to run this, but a very inexpensive tool to have. Um, this is the set of gauges, so that, that, that one tells you the psi of the, com the compressed air that you put into the cylinder. That one tells you where you are on your, on your leakage as of you want it. Somewhere in the yellow, ideally. Green will be normal. And over here, you know, you're, you're, you're pulling your motor apart. Now, and you're also, the, the third tool, which they don't mention in the case, is you need your ear. Because you want to hear where the air is coming from. Uh, this this fitting here is a homemade one I've made. I wouldn't necessarily advise anyone doing that because you're playing with compressed air. But it, it's only that, like, my compressor runs a PCL fitting and these are these gold Euro things that I don't understand so I, I, I just converted a PCL main adapter in the lathe with a PCL fitting. Now, as, as I put it together I'll show you step by step. First, first things first I want to do a compression test on all the four cylinders with this blue fella here and we'll see what condition the motor is in before we go down to the leak down test so compression test gives us an idea of pressure the sun is holding leak down test zeroes in on where the pressure is leaking out from so bear with us I'll set you up so you can see it from somewhere where I'm looking from uh, and hopefully it helps you out give me a second Okay, so we've got the adapter in the hose here that fits the compression tester. And I'm going to stick that into the number one cylinder, turn the motor over until we see the top dead centre mark through the little hole here, uh, which is marked T on the auto advance unit, to tell us where the top dead centre And we know we're there because number at, at, at the moment... Number uh, four is loose, so that's that that's set on number four at the minute. I'll I'll spin it through one eighty degrees, and we'll we'll get that so that number one is where both the tappets are loose. I've already wound the tappets out, so they're way looser than what we need. Uh, just to confirm that the valve seats are the valves are all all the way home against the seat. Um, and we're, we're, we're going to get a, a true reading so we're not being fooled by a tight tap it or anything or like that so I'll just screw this in I'll plug the uh, the gauge in and we'll, we'll spin it over and see what that tells us ok so I'll just screw that hose into the spark plug hole on number 1 
I'll plug this. I don't know if that's the right thing. Plug that hose into the uh, into the fit in there. And I'll spin this over so that we're 180 around from where we were before. Well, 360 round. 360. That's T on number one. You can tell that that's right because both our tappets are loose. We've already wound them off, so we know that the valves are all the way on. Then just turn the key, make sure the uh, spark plug leaves are tied out the way. It would make for a better video if I got a belt, but let's uh, let's just do it right, eh? So here we go, cranking now, and as the as the motor turns over. You'll see the uh, the compression rise and shows on that gauge. Right, that's not terrible. That's that cylinder would run all right. Uh, that's sort of uh, eighty five ish. Um, it's low. It's lower. It's lower than we want to see because. I rebuilt this motor from the ground up about 18,000 miles ago and I know that when I built it the compression was a lot higher than that so that that cylinder has suffered some some kind of damage so we, we know we're going to be doing a leak down on that I'll move over to number two we'll take the motor around and do the same again I have a bit of pen and paper to one side so you can you, you can record what you're seeing. Okay, there's the hose set in number two. Make sure that that's tight on the O-ring. Get that fella back in. And crank it again. That, that's still reading the pressure from before, so we can release that. Nope. Wasn't plugged in properly. Again, low. So I'll switch over to number three. So it's in there properly this time. Right, I'll call that 75. There's the hose in number four. Rinse and repeat. That one's not terrible. That was that, that one. That one will run okay, but I'd like to see him over the hundred. Let's do that again just to make sure. Uh, that and that was the one that the rubber hadn't split on, so I was expecting to see that one slightly higher. It had, it had split a little bit, but not all the way. But if any of these rubbers split and you and you're riding quick. A lot of air is going to go in, the thing's going to lean off and the cylinder's temperature is going to be running way higher than what Mr. Honda ever intended to. So we are definitely going to do a leak down test on this to find out where the where the cylinders are losing pressure from. Uh, whether it is the valves letting some of the pressure pass by them or the rings are done and we're, uh, we're, we're, we're getting some blow past in which case we'll be pressurising the crankcase uh, this this crankcase breathes to atmosphere I, I put the breather pipe in, in the little hole there so that any, uh, any oil vapour 
uh, goes on the drive chain and just helps that a little, a little long, makes your chain last a little bit longer. So uh, we're not going to end up with a situation where the crack, where, the, where you're going to be blowing gaskets or and um, because the uh, because the cylinder the cylinders are pressurizing the crankcase. But yeah, we're going to be on with a leak down test now. So we'll be on to the 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 red box next. Set that up with the uh, with the air compressor. Uh, I've got I've got a little hobby air compressor set up there uh, where I was over there on the chair, so we can uh, we can do the same again with that. Um, this time we won't be cranking cranking it over. This time we'll be filling the filling the cylinders with air with the piston, the top dead center, so we can listen for where the leak is coming from uh, and we'll start start at number one again we're doing one at a time and uh, yeah well that'll give us a, that'll give us a clue as to what we can expect to see when we take the engine apart i know now from that that we are taking the motor we are opening the motor it might be the top it might be the barrels as well uh in this case the barrels are looking pretty scabby after eighteen thousand mile of uh you know my general dipshittery um, and using it for work and a million miles across Europe and whatever you know, uh, we can use this opportunity to give them a refresh and paint it up a bit uh, for the miles I do I don't know whether this is probably the most sensible bike for me to keep maybe I'll be selling it after 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 I've repaired all this and give it give it a good tidy up and we'll let the next custodian take over after that maybe I don't know uh, Fancy an FJ for a while, so maybe I'll do that. But bear with me, and uh, we'll we'll do a leak down test it next, and uh, and show you how to do that because, like all my stuff, it might help you along the way. Bear with us. Okay, so I've switched out the I've switched out the hose on back to number one. That that now plugs into. This fitting on the uh, leak down tester and the compressor which I've already switched on and primed just so that the compressor is not running during the video uh, if it does switch on again I apologize for it I'll uh, I'll try and edit that out and we'll connect that to oh I'm not one more thing I need to put my little uh, adapter here this converts the PCL fitting to the European version or whatever they call it. I need to wind that guy out. That's a regulator for the uh, for the pressure gauge on the leak down tester. Right, so we're good to go there. Uh, I can't see this too good here, but we've we've set the we've set the crank to top dead center on number one, so that we've got loose tappets on both sides. I do I do that on the compression test and the leak down test, just so just so you know that your valves are all 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 the way back to the seat. All right, set the tappets loose. Now then, this this regulator here, this allows us to put air into the cylinder, and as we open the valve, we can hear it hissing. We know we've got we know we've got a leak on that cylinder. Um, I'll just bring you around here. The gauge on the right there tells you we've got a high percentage of leakage. Right. If we go around there, we can actually hear it. Coming out of the inlet on number one. So that tells me that the valve on inlet number one is not seizing correctly. So that's where our fault is there. If we 
find the back off again. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do this one handed. I'll just stop that there because otherwise the compressor will light up and ruin the video. And um, yeah. So our needle was our needle was somewhat over in the red, right, with 10 psi running through it, and we could hear it hissing. That we shouldn't get anything. The pre the pressure should rise far higher than that. And with these gauges being white, it's, re it's reflecting a little bit off the lights in the shed here, but um, there was no noise coming out the front from where I'm sitting here now. I could only hear it from the back. So that means our exhaust valve is probably good, but our inlet valve has suffered some damage, either the valve or the seat, right? which confirms, again, we're, we are opening the motor. So we, we, know, we know we're probably buying an inlet valve or getting a seat done. Some kind of repair has got to be done, so the, the head's coming off anyway, but I'll go through the rest anyway. Just so that I'm not going to get any surprises when I do up, do up the motor. Uh, I'll just set it up for number two and we'll start again. Okay, I've got the hose screwed into number two. The uh, the lines connected to the uh, to the gauges there. I'll just spin the crank round so that we're in number two and three position on the T mark, the top dead centre and see if uh, both, both the tappets are loose on number two so I'll plug the airline back in and we'll listen to where the hisses are coming from the same principle works on uh, water cooled motors as well but you can you, you can find uh, with a water cooled motor that you might be hearing the hissing come from the header tank because it's it's done the head gasket so it, it it it's breached into the water system so that that'll tell you whether to take the head off and put your head gasket on or you've got a cracked head you know all sorts of horrible things you know it's all bad news again the regulator this time is is backed off properly i hope you can see this because I say these uh the, these white gauges aren't showing up too good on the uh the old camera so we'll open, we'll open the valve now. The gauge is telling us we've got a leak. And we listen to the noise. That is leaking from the exhaust. I'll just uh, I'll just bring it down, see if it see if the sound will show. Uh, sorry about that. Can't, can't avoid the compressor coming back on. We need we need the pressure so we can see what's going on. So if I get my head down there, that's definitely leaking out that exhaust, and there might be there might be a leak on both sides there, and with the valves both being closed because the tappets are loose. We've got some damage on both sides there. So, pause again, we're on to number three. There's number three cylinder plumbed in with the uh, with the hose and the gauges. Uh, I'll just, now this time we'll spin this round 360 degrees. So we're back to two and three again. Top dead centre lined up against the firing mark. Uh, see what's uh, 
so let's open with this one. Let's open the regulator. Very little pressure reading on the PSI. Compressor will probably kick in in a minute. Sorry about that. High leakage on here. Inlet is leaking. Exhaust leaking quite bad. I'll just uh, bring it back down there. So see, if, see if the microphone will pick it up. I don't know if you can hear that, but if you're doing this, if you're doing this job yourself, you know it, 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 it's hard to miss. If you have any leaks out your compressor, try and try and stop them before you start. Because you can sometimes mistake that for a leak in the, in the motor. Um, we know we're pulling it apart, but we'll do number four anyway. So that's uh, that. That's it for this little video. Uh, I hope uh, it helps you out. It, you don't have to have had a problem like I have. Uh, you, if you've just bought a vehicle or uh, the same principle works on any engine if you just want to have a little look and see what kind of condition your motor's in uh, even if it's running okay you, you can you can know if you're going to have a problem down the line or whether like somebody maybe has tried to hide something from you when they sold you something you know, not everyone was honest out there you know especially these old things they're all a bit wonky like you know uh, Great engines, bad owners, all that. Um, yeah, it might help you out. I'm going to be tearing this thing apart. Uh, I don't. I, I don't think it needs a rebar because I never need no, no, no whistling coming out the, the breather. But I'm certainly going to pull the barrels off and give them a little uh, cheer up and a tidy up. You know, um, get, get my horn out. Maybe it could be just throw a set of rings in for the sake of it. I don't think they're that expensive. Uh, I rebought this when I built it seven or eight years ago um so unless i find any nightmares in there then I'll, i probably won't be going that far but certainly we need to do a valve job on the on this motor um and then we'll be we'll be back up to speed again it should be should be trucking along just good um well i'm gonna be tearing this thing apart in the next couple of days uh so if anyone wants to see the video of the of me opening the motor and uh, throw it in the comments so I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to film it um, yeah thanks everyone for subscribing and uh, i appreciate you all watching and keep it between the ditches guys love you